Hello, you're watching Telecom TV Spotlight on 5G series. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content. And joining me now to discuss the role of cloud native within telecoms networks is Rajesh Gadiar, who is VP and Chief Technology Officer, Network Platforms Group at Intel. Hello, Rajesh, very good to see you again. Now, Intel has been a pioneer and leader in transforming the network infrastructure. And as 5G ramps up and with the edge computing revolution now underway, what do you see as the next phase of network transformation? Yeah, hello, Guy. It's a real pleasure to be talking to you again. As you know, our industry has made incredible progress with NFP and SDN. Disaggregation of hardware and software is very real. And this disaggregation has resulted in two key things. First, Network applications are increasingly software defined. And as we enter the 5G era, we have gained tremendous agility in building new and innovative applications. Second, we have opened up the ecosystem with many new players in the networking space. The barrier to entry is significantly reduced with standard server-based hardware and virtualization. We've seen great progress across enterprise and cloud, wireline and wireless infrastructure, RAN and edge. Now, the next phase of network transformation journey is the cloud native transformation. While we have made huge progress over the last few years in this space, there is still much more to do to drive further disaggregation of hardware and software and to make the applications composable, automated, and deployable anywhere, whether it's on premise in an enterprise, at the edge, in the network cloud, or in the hyperscaler cloud. So, we need to embrace these cloud native principles to achieve our objectives. Our industry is looking to emulate the hyperscale cloud service providers for the degree of automation, scalability, disaggregation, and resiliency they've been able to achieve. Cloud native transformation can deliver the TCO benefits and agility that the industry desires. But we have to address some of the current gaps such as uh, automation, high performance data plane processing, hybrid and multi-cloud deployment models, and so on. So I'm super excited at the opportunity to lead in this next phase of network transformation. As you say, there's still a lot of work to, to be done by the telcos with regards to cloud native. So can you explain the key tenets of cloud native and where we are today in the transformation journey? Yeah, that's a great question. So from my perspective, there are three key imperatives for cloud native. First, it is the disaggregated infrastructure. Second, it is automated lifecycle management of applications. And third, how do we make applications composable? So first, with disaggregation, we are aiming for hardware software separation and abstraction of software from underlying platform hardware so you can flexibly deploy your application components anywhere in the cloud. Second, it's the massive automation for infrastructure bring up and deployment and end-to-end -end management of applications in an automated fashion. With uh, distributed computing, particularly edge computing, becoming a very popular choice for many latency sensitive applications, automation is becoming a critical need. Now, you don't want to roll a truck with a technician to install a new service or to address an outage all the time. And finally, we need to be able to build and deploy composable applications with a microservices based deployment architecture. The idea here is to decompose the applications into smaller granular services called microservices. So there is greater flexibility and ability to scale the services by deploying application components at different locations based on quality of service, cost, and other needs. Now, there's huge interest at the moment around CNFs and container-based network functions. Where do you see some of the early deployments of CNFs and what are the lessons that we've learned so far? Yeah, first, uh, a quick word on containers. So as you know, containers in cloud computing are used to package uh, building blocks of an application which help in operational efficiency, version control, and developer productivity. Now, because of this, the user is confident of reliability, consistency, and agility, regardless of the platform. The container-based deployments can also benefit from cloud scale, information security, service availability, and elasticity. So in short, the potential benefits of containers are lower overhead, faster bring up uh, or startup speed, reduced maintenance, and speed of deployment with a continuous integration, continuous deployment paradigm. And these are super interesting for building network applications um, going forward. So we've seen early container adoption and deployments in enterprise, uh, in SD-WAN, UCP kind of deployments, cloud infrastructures like security services, web services, 
wireless RAN or virtual RAN, wireless core, uh, 5G distributed user plane functions or UPFs. Uh, these are all great examples. Now, of course, most momentum today is in the cloud infrastructure because of all the reasons we have pointed out earlier. We see a lot of promise in the network infrastructure and edge to achieve this cloud scale and agility to deploy new services with end-to-end -end automation. So where do you think we are in the maturity and use of, of containers and also Kubernetes? And what is Intel doing to address some of the key challenges for communication service providers in adopting cloud native? Yeah, Guy, I believe that the container technology is fairly mature at this time and uh, it's being deployed today. In recent months, we have seen Rakuten, for example, deploy the Rakuten cloud platform, which has been built with cloud native principles. Uh, we've also seen Verizon talk about the cloud native 5G core. Um, we've seen others like Ericsson make big strides in containerized cloud native stacks. Uh, but I also think there are a few areas that need further work. Specifically, I think um, there are um, you know five or six areas that would benefit from further industry collaboration with respect to cloud native solutions. Um, these being, uh, we need to actually improve container networking capabilities uh, for feature, for performance, for quality of service. We need to um, drive intelligent workload scheduling and uh, quality of service-based workload placements. Multi-cloud orchestration is another area that would actually benefit from significant industry collaboration. Resiliency, fault tolerance, um, improving performance and latency of uh, microservices. Uh, and uh, technologies like service mesh, which uh, forms the communication fabric on which the microservices communi communicate with each other. Now, um, when I think about challenges, uh, I see two key areas. First, it is the infrastructure around containers, such as the container networking and storage services. Um, these are not yet optimal to deploy latency sensitive applications, such as the real-time applications with voice and video, um, video analytics, um, using this cloud native approach. And second, uh, and probably this is the bigger challenge, it is the lack of a good ecosystem that delivers container-based applications and services that are hardened and optimized for performance. And this is where Intel is playing a key role as a technology provider to enable a platform for rapid innovation. Thanks, Rajesh. Now, we know that cloud adoption comes in different shapes and sizes. What are you seeing with regards to hybrid cloud and multi-cloud architectures? Yeah, and you know, uh, hybrid and multi-cloud architectures are becoming very popular. Um, enterprise and telco customers are looking to transform their infrastructure with cloud principles. Now, while this is an important factor in their move to cloud native deployment models, another key reason is that they desire elasticity. Elasticity to extend their on-premise deployments into a public cloud infrastructure and benefit from the cost and um, the scale. Now, this is the essence of hybrid cloud which is an on-prem cloud infrastructure extended to a public cloud. While they do this, they also want to maintain the flexibility to work with any hyperscaler cloud provider based on their capabilities and TCO benefits. So for example, I might actually uh, see tremendous benefit in using an analytic service in uh, a particular cloud, uh, cloud service provider infrastructure, whereas I might actually want some uh, cost-efficient compute for my billing applications that I might want to run in another cloud. And so these are all the possibilities because of which um, uh, you know, it's, it's very compelling to use uh, multiple clouds. So my belief is that eventually um, all this would drive the adoption of a true multi-cloud enabled infrastructure. And is there any specific work that the open source community and Intel is doing in this area? Absolutely. Um, here at Intel, we've been improving the capabilities of container networking. And you may be familiar with our work in Maltus, um, which is a container network interface plugin. We're also driving a cloud native data plane that provides uh, abstraction, but also uh, strikes the right balance between the hardware abstraction and uh, the performance needs of network applications. Now, many of these capabilities are enabled in an edge software solution um, called Openness that um, we've actually uh, had in market now for um, uh, over a year. And if you're not familiar with openness, I encourage you to look at 01.org slash openness. We've been also participating in Acrino and uh, driving a cloud native blueprint. Uh, we participate heavily in CNCF, the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, and we are a major contributor to the Kubernetes project. Um, and in Kubernetes, our focus is uh, how do we actually uh, make Kubernetes more hardware aware 
so all these uh, investments that we're making in our uh, hardware platforms and new capabilities that we're bringing in generation over generation, how do we make sure that they're exposed to the applications? So when you do, uh, when you create an end-to-end -end service, uh, you can actually place the microservices with the full knowledge of platform capabilities. So as an example, if you're building a cloud gaming service, you want to actually place some of the workloads um, at a location where you have the GPU compute available. So these are all the things that we are trying to do in Kubernetes. So yes, uh, to answer your question, um, uh, are, you know, significant contributions to many open source projects, uh, particularly in CNCF for the Cloud Native Compute Foundation. And finally, Rajesh, there's a lot of exciting innovation going on. Where do you see the industry moving from here? What is Intel's vision for the next two or three years? Yeah, guys, so we live in exciting times. Um, you know, 5G deployments, as you know, are in full swing around the world, and that's just the beginning. Uh, 5G has so much more potential. It is fueling an innovation cycle like never before, particularly at the edge, which um, I like to call the epicenter of innovation. And embracing cloud native architecture is fundamental to realizing the full benefit of 5G and edge computing. So cloud native is the key to delivering efficient, scalable, and automated end-to-end -end services. Our vision at Intel is to lead the next phase of network transformation with the cloud native approach. I would emphasize three key things that we are driving. First, we are delivering a compelling and market-leading product and technology roadmap. The vision I am driving as the CTO of networking business is that a standard Xeon server is the best-in-class network applications platform, and it delivers the best TCO for our customers. Second, it is to drive the software innovations that are required for the cloud-native transformation. Here, we are delivering software such as Openness, which I talked about, Smart Edge, Edge Insights for Industrial, Open Vino, all of this that provide an easy button to build composable applications for our customers. And third, we want to continue to foster an open and vibrant ecosystem for new and innovative network application solutions. So I'm super excited and I hope you feel the same way. Oh, absolutely, Rajesh. And uh, after talking with you uh, even more so today, thank you very much for joining us again. As always, it's, it's a pleasure and thanks for sharing your insights. And you can watch more interviews, roundtables and features, all part of our Spotlight on 5G series right here on Telecom TV. For now, though, thanks for watching and goodbye.